Hey Queens, this is Pixie. Um, apologies for this being a rather short video and for it coming while I'm still, uh, well, I've promised various other videos. Um, I still have the rest of the Rome uh, vlogs to do. I still have to edit uh, the show and tell videos about um, Goth on a Budget. They are all still in the works, but um, I have the post Mira Luna Mira Lurgy. In other words, I got stonking cold, so I wanted to just, uh, I didn't want to leave the channel bare and barren for too long, but I also didn't want to um, have to do too much editing, so I'm doing this just as a very quick, fun, hopefully fun video, and I'm fidgeting already, so I apologise if the camera's doing, doing the little wobbly do. So yeah, this is just a show and tell of the stuff that I bought while maybe slightly tiddly while listening to bands in the cold wet field <laughs> um of Mira Luna um this year as I will I will do I'm I'm working on a great big long vlog of doom but I haven't done it yet so um I may end up repeating myself a bit in that video <laughs> um yeah it wasn't the nicest weather this year this has been probably the worst weather I've ever seen at Mira Luna and I've I've been going for about seven or eight years now, maybe more, and my friend Alan has been pretty much going since the second year it was running, so he's been, this is like his 17th Miraluna, he said he's never seen um, weather this bad either. Um, so when we got there, it was already muddy and miry and horrible, and in putting up my tent I got absolutely soaked. So, the first thing that I got is this thing that I'm wearing. Um, I'm, I'm kind of puffing my shirt, my chest out so you can see the design. This is a lovely, warm, snuggly jumper by Killstar. Um, I don't think it is actually wool, I think it's acrylic. Uh, it may, it may be wool blend. I will check the label and put it on the screen. Um, but I got this because my, the only hoodie I bought with me to Mira Luna is, was absolutely sodden like it was wet through and usually I have you know a warm thing to sleep in um because during the night it's usually too cold to just have the sleeping bag um and I like to have layers so that when it gets hot in the morning as um being in a tent often does uh, I can then strip off the layers so I got <coughs> excuse me I got this because uh I was freezing my my ass off basically and um, I'm actually really happy with it. It's more expensive than I would normally spend on a jumper, but the details are lovely. Like, it's got these lovely, I'm not sure how well these are coming up on screen, but um, these lovely uh, drop stitch details, which is something that I actually love to do in my own knitting. Um, I would never j knit a jumper this big on this small a gauge, but um, it's nice to have some um, sort of carry through with my bought knitwear to my, like, her made knitwear. Um, and it has this lovely big unicursal hexagram on it. I'm gonna do that, eh? I don't know how well this is standing off the camera. <laughs> um, the unicursal hexagram, um, sometimes also called like an Aquarian star, I think, is a, a symbol used in alchemy. It's also used, um, well, uh, very prominently in Thelema, uh, Thelema, Thelema? Thelema. I can never remember how to pronounce it. It's either Thelema or Thelema, um, which is, was is is was is the uh, sort of occult religion that Alistair Crowley sort of founded. Um, I am not a Thelemite, but I like the symbology of this because it means like balance and law and order and sort of as above so below type. Yeah, that's right, type of thing. Um, so yeah, I am quite fond of this, and it's lovely and warm, so I've been wearing it a lot. It's just the right sort of, um, you can't see because I'm sat down, but um, it's sort of tunic length, so it sits just about on my upper thigh, um, covers my bum, which is always nice, and it has, again, these drop stitch details like this on the hem, which is quite nice. And it's really warm, and it saved me from hypothermia while sitting in an airfield, so that's nice. Long story short, the heavens opened during ASP's set here on Sunday, 
Saturday, sorry, Saturday, and I got absolutely drenched, everything I was wearing went through, it's had to be on the drying rack ever since, that was a week ago, um, so I wanted to get some, um, I was sort of keeping my eyes open for some new leggings, because I felt kind of grotty, and I thought if I was wearing some, at least some fresh leggings, I'd feel a little bit less grotty, so, I'm not again, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera, uh, but I got these lovely leggings by Punk Rave, who are one of my favourite brands, um, Details wise, I'm not sure how well this is going. If I do it sideways, that might work. Uh, that way, there, there, that works. So it's got this nice sort of distressed effect above here. This sort of sits on your upper thigh, so that this is slightly above your knee. Um, and they've got these nice studs and this cool strap with this very surprisingly sharp, spiky uh, garter thing. And then there's a slight print effect that makes it look kind of grungy and nice on the on the legs themselves. They're a teeny tiny bit too small for me but they're comfortable enough and um, I like I like the sort of slightly Mad Maxy, slightly post apocalyptic -y, grungy feel to them. They're, 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 they make nice day wear. Um, which I, I often I, I very rarely get nice day wear stuff. I like my day wear is frequently charity shops and Primark, so this and those are a bit of a nice change of pace, to be honest. Like, I would probably wouldn't wear either of these to go out, but they're, yeah, nice day wear. I do probably talk about the first thing that I bought. Um, I buy these every year, so this is not the most exciting thing, but um, every year I go to the Sonic Seducer stand. This, these guys, uh, Sonic Seducer, they're a German magazine, they they write about goth bands uh, in German. I Unfortunately I can't read any of the articles. Oh, there's one about Beauty with Jemina, I love them. Um, I can't read any of the articles, so I just tend to nick the pictures for things, but um, the main reason I buy these is because of this. Every year they do um, a two-part uh, special DVD of the previous, or, or, or you know, previous years of Mirrorlina. So this was 2016. I haven't watched it yet. Um, uh, the the first disc is usually like um, a bunch of interviews, a bunch of um, live clips, and some just other stuff, including my favourite bit, which is the they call them impressionin, and it's just like filming people around at the festival, which is nice because it's like how many of my friends can I see in there? Um, and then the second one, uh, usually, and yeah, it does this year as well, uh, has like extra music videos from various bands of various genres. So I've ended up finding a lot of stuff that I really like from looking at this, and there's some MP3s on it this year as well from Battles and the Bands. Uh, I have no idea if that's, yeah, just as Battle of the Bands. I have no idea whether that's anything connected to Mira Luna or what, but, you know, new bands, it might be, might be interesting. Uh, one day I will learn German and I will finally be able to read the magazines that I've bought. But, uh, yeah, so I always, always get this for the previous year. And the nice thing about Sonic Seducer is they always come with a nice little tote bag. This year's one says, there's no light without darkness. Hmm. Uh, they're, they're quite useful. <laughs> I, uh, especially this year where uh, they were being a bit funny about um, handbags and things because there'd been uh, bomb scares, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, so I got, I got that purely because of that. So this is a, a really interesting uh, necklace by Restyle. Um, yeah, I think it sort of goes like that. Uh, no, it doesn't, or whatever. It, go, it goes like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up. It's got these little, like... Uh, all of the pieces look like they're made of bone, which is quite fun. Um, so you've got these little bone crosses, and then almost like a rosary design with the, the extra pendant on the end. 
um, and that's the alchemical uh, symbol for phosphorus. Um, so it, this is really nice and spooky. But this is again, this, this is probably what I would wear as more day wear. Um, put it on. Oh, they're extra spooky. Um, yeah, again, more day wear stuff than than sort of evening wear, and I wouldn't want to wear that to a club or a um, gig. <laughs> I can't, I can't wear it. Sorry, I'm full of cold. Um, because like, I don't think it would, it would, it would uh, survive. But it's quite nice. Um, it's quite a nice thing. And um, I'm always, I'm always in favour of spooky spooky stuff like I I really enjoy the bone texture of this is really quite sinister in a really pleasing way. It's got stuck in the bag. Um so there's this one stall that does kind of the dead stuff. Um that sounds horrible but uh um there's one stall in the sort of medieval markety bit that just like that they, they they sell bits of animal basically. Um, there's actually more than one. There's there's the ones that do like the drinking horns, and then there's the ones that do like um, uh, pelts and stuff. But this one I like because they do skulls and antlers and things, and I think most of them are eth ethically sourced. Um, my germ is not good enough to to, to understand a lot of it, but um, yeah, I asked a few questions and it sounded sounded legit. Um, but again, yeah, the, the, these are animal products, so you may want to turn away if that's not your jam. Um, first of all, so a couple of little porcupine quills. These are so sharp; they keep getting caught on things. But they're they're beautiful. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them. I might just put them in my hair, make some sort of terrifying, rather dangerous hairpiece. Um, I'm trying to find what I did with the other bit. Oh, it's in a bag. In a bag. Mm. Um. So next bit. Um, antlers with screws on which will make it really easy to put these on a hat. I have a hat that needs some horns basically so these are going on there and again like antlers shed so if anyone's worrying you can acquire these without killing the animal um, and then the last bit which I think is, will come from a dead animal so I apologise but uh, this is just so cool and spooky. Um, this is a pendant with a, a bird's foot. I think it looks like some sort of crow. It doesn't look corvid to me, but my, my uh, I don't know, it, it, it looks like a dinosaur. Um, and then it's holding um, a quartz point. And this is just the most delicious voodoo. Um, not really, um, like, witchy, spooky stuff. This is so my jam. Um, I, I, I'm fascinated by, by birds' feet. They're just the most, I don't know, they're the most, like, dinosaur-looking thing. Like, I, it boggles my mind that there are people who, like, don't believe that birds evolved from dinosaurs. I mean, look at that. That's a raptor foot. I found this other store where I went really mad that has like loads of um, like jewellery findings and shit. Um, according to this little thingy, they have a store in Leipzig, or maybe they're based in Leipzig. The, the, this this is they. Um, I spend so much money there, you guys. So ugh, let's just show you some of these. So like pentagram skeleton dude. Uh, bird skull, key, little buddy bats, uh, some little antlers, um, not antlers, horns, I don't know what I'm going to do with these, but, uh, sort of chandelier-y thing, that's quite cute, um, frame for a cameo, I've got masses of cheap cameos, so that will go somewhere, uh, Little scully do, little pen nib, more batty bats. Um, oh yeah, and these are cute little cob babies. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't really mad in there, but um, 
and now they've all fallen between my legs. Oh, there's a snake as well, and another bird skull. Hmm. Um, because usually I end up getting a few th things in Whitby. I'm not doing Whitby this year, so this is all of my little bits of shiny stuff to last me for the next year. Because I like, I put them on hats, I put them on the end of chains, I just put them everywhere really. Um, so yeah, I, I spent like an inordinate amount of money on the tiniest things. <laughs> Um, last, last couple of things, and then I'll show you the, the thing that I am most excited about. Ooh. Um, we went to the chocolate shop, so lots of chocolate, um, like chocolate coffee beans. Uh, they, these were not from Mira Luna. Um, uh, these are from, as you can see, PJs. Um, the most glorious place that is both a chocolate shop and a duty free shop. Um, it's a Belgian chocolate factory, it's glorious. Um, so yeah, it always makes me happy going there. Um, also got some like food stuff from the supermarket and including um, some cherry mead, which is the best thing ever. And I'll talk about that a bit more in the Mira Luna blog that I the vlog that I do eventually when I'm less full of cold. But last of all, um, and this is going to rustle a little bit. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. So this, oh my god, you guys, this is the most beautiful thing. And I, oh, I spent so much money. So this here, uh, this, this, these, these are the names of the peeps that made it. Um, and this is the thing itself. This is a beautiful headdress with feathers and beads and it's so clever it clips together with these kind of they're kind of like bra straps and kind of like a bikini clasp so that when it's on your head it's relatively lightweight but also relatively sturdy so you can dance while wearing it if you can put it on your head when you're not being a cack-handed idiot like I am <laughs> Can you see that? Can you see this? Is it showing up on the camera? Have I put my head too high up on the frame? I don't know. Um, come on. Come on, come on, come on. I haven't quite gotten the hang of, um, fucking hell, <laughs> of, um, putting it on my head yet. It's gonna take a little bit of practice, but that's okay. Um, I just love having the shinies in my field of vision. There we go. I heard a click. So put the head I'm doing the tail end of this through my phone, so I apologise for the dodgy quality. But look at this thing. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm so happy with it. It was very expensive, but look at it. Look at it. Um, it's really well made and a lot less fragile than any of the things I've ever made for my head. Um, and yeah, it's really steady. Like I can move my head around and it barely moves. So yeah, I'm going to do a proper vlog very, very soon. And in the meantime, bye-bye.